Now, Life is Strange reaches a beautiful crescendo, and at the apex of Max's character development and her transition into adulthood and autonomy, we have the character of Mark Jefferson. And the big twist is the personal betrayal he embodies um, as Max, Max's idol. The build-up to the Jefferson reveal is reminiscent, I think, of many other thriller films, and, you know, being convinced of Nathan's guilt, we head to the aptly named End of the World Party. And this party scenario, in which the joy and the celebration of the attendees is subverted by the protagonist's strife, is very similar, I think, to, for example, you know, the house party in Donnie Darko, just prior to Gretchen's death, and also the high school prom setting in Stephen King's Carrie, for example. And shortly after attending, you know, the Vortex party, Jefferson emerges as, you know, the antagonist. You know, he, he, he turns up at Rachel's burial site and in a brutal fashion, he immediately murders a surprised Chloe and kidnaps Max um, to become the next subject of his, his very strange photographic work. And personally, I was really surprised by this reveal, and I thought it was really good. But my girlfriend, who was actually really keen on watching me play this game because she really liked the story, she'd been consistently telling me throughout the game that Jefferson is involved somehow. She kept saying that guy's involved. Uh, And I'm interested to know if anyone else suspected him, because I really didn't see it coming. I mean, maybe I'm just dumb, but there we go. Early on, I will admit, actually, early on, I did think Samuel was a bit dodgy, and I thought perhaps Principal Wells knew more than he should. But other than that, I I didn't suspect any of the teachers or the the faculty in this game at all. Turning to the characteristics of Jefferson, this seemingly charming mentor and teacher has very strong similarities to the the guy from Hard Candy, uh, which is a movie that came out uh, quite a few years ago now. But... Uh, he seems like someone you can trust and defend throughout the game because he's so personable and so charismatic, but he actually turns out to have a real dark side. Um, the bad guy in Hard Candy, Jeff, uh, turns out to be a paedophile, um, but that kind of gets turned on its head, and unlike that kind of twist in Hard Candy, Jefferson prevails as the antagonist, and while not overtly or intentionally a killer, Jefferson has all the hallmark traits of a serial killer in the way he goes about his photographic endeavours, both through his unassuming personality and his his chosen victims. Indeed, if we look at two famously convicted serial killers, uh, Ted Bundy and Charles Manson, they are both very renowned for their charismatic demeanour towards their victims and and in the courtroom. Although, I think I'm right in saying Manson didn't actually kill anyone, but rather he was so charismatic that he managed to convince his cult following to go and commit murders on his behalf. You know, such was his gravitas in the the nomadic kind of beat culture of 60s America. So if we look at how Jefferson conducts his lectures and how students, including Max, talk about him, we can see that he has a very similar pull about him that draws his intended subjects in towards him. And of course we have Nathan who he manipulates into a faux father-son relationship for, you know, to to utilise his wealth and resources and um, access Frank's drug supply. Uh, Secondly, not all serial killers, but a vast majority tend to target young women, which is self-explanatory as Jefferson seeks out what he refers to as the aura of youth and tends to work exclusively with female subjects. And finally, uh, this comparison with serial killers, they tend to act... um, with a degree of hedonism, either for lust or power or this feeling of dominance. And I think this is really quite well exhibited by Jefferson as well when we look at the the subject matter of his photographs. And it's Jefferson's photographs, actually, that I want to talk about briefly now and how they contrast to Max and her reasons for photographing. Now, I think Jefferson reveals a very interesting psychological idea about what it is to photograph, and where Max uses photography to detach and observe the world from the safety of the lens, Jefferson uses photography to own and to dominate. The late academic Susan Sontag covered this idea in her fantastic book um, on photography, which I'd recommend to anyone interested in the subject, and she drew comparisons between the act of photography and the act of firing a gun, noting that even the terminology of photography, which is to load film, to aim, and to shoot, is very similar to that of a gun. And um, here I quote Sontag, There is something predatory in the act of taking a picture. 
To photograph people is to violate them, by seeing them as they never see themselves, by having knowledge of them that they can never have. It turns people into objects that can be symbolically possessed. Just as a camera is the sublimination of a gun, to photograph someone is a subliminal murder, a soft murder, appropriate to a sad, frightened time. I think Sontag's viewpoint is very much how we could consider Jefferson, and it's worth noting that in terms of his actual artistic output and his very perverted aesthetic, Jefferson does draw, uh, surprisingly, uh, real-world parallels with an actual high art photographer. Now, the photographer, uh, th- there's a Japanese photographer called uh, Nobuyushi Araki, um, which is A R A K I, and this guy became famous as a photographer with a beautiful. Um, photographic diary titled Sentimental Journey about his wife. But his wife later died, and since that time his work has become very dark and almost exclusively features uh, young Japanese girls in bondage and in extreme bondage scenarios. And he's really quite an acclaimed artist, but, you know, there are some real, uh, you know, uh, visible um, um, comparisons to make between uh, the Jefferson's work that we see in the game and Araki's work. Um, but if you if you plan on looking him up, I wouldn't advise doing it on a work computer, put it that way. So Jefferson is a very interesting characterization of not only a duplicitous, almost Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde antagonist, but also the very different applications of the camera to the world. His desire to dominate and preserve this aura of youth in a moment of helplessness really makes me interested in Jefferson's backstory, and I'm not sure if he's due to feature in Before the Storm or whether his development in the prequel you know, would be any good if so, but he's certainly an anomaly and an enigma, and he really maintains the player's engagement and propels the story in the closing aspect of the game. And you know, it seems to me that Jefferson, you know, perhaps he has a fear of growing old, or perhaps he wants to salvage this amorous youth that he mentions of being promiscuous in Seattle. Uh, but, you know, regardless, his, his photographic work does seem to have quite an erotic edge, but at the same time, he doesn't appear to commit any physical or sexual, you know, acts on his victims. You know, much like the late Andy Warhol, he, su- he chooses to kind of just observe and, you know, note this fragility and this erotica from a safe distance. So... I can't really work out Jefferson, Um, I just think he's like a really, really interesting character and one of the great, one of the best plot twists I've seen in a a video game to date, I think. 